Hello and good morning. Um, welcome to another installment of um, an old Nubian philology video series. Um, my name is Sint van Gerven Uy. I am a specialist in old Nubian, and today um, we are going to look at some uh, magic. So. Um, a colleague of mine, uh, Joost Hagen, he um, is currently working and has been working for quite a while on the um, Coptic texts that were found during the excavations in Kassir Ibrim. Um, the excavations in Kassir Ibrim were uh, overseen by uh, J. Martin Plumley of the um, Egypt Exploration Society, if I'm not mistaken. And they yielded enormous amounts of documents in Meritic, Greek, Arabic, Old Nubian, Coptic. Um, most of the Old Nubian documents have been published uh, by Gerald Brown. And then another batch of those was recently published in 2014 by uh, Giovanni Ruffini. And there is still a lot of scraps and and small pieces that remain unpublished um i have on my hard drive i think like eight gigabytes that giovanni sent to me like with published and unpublished stuff and it i still have to sort it through but it's like this enormous work and it's it's not very well organized and it's all these photographs of photographs of documentation that was taken there of the different um, notebooks in which the archaeologists made their find notes and so you have to kind of correlate all these data points um, and it's it's um, it is a work um, Joost has been working on the Coptic material which is equally voluminous um, and now and then he sends me something because there is some old Nubian that is in it um, and and some days ago he sent me this um, little text on paper it's incomplete it's like it's as if somebody like it's like if you fold a paper in four and then you know you only have one quarter left something like that um, and it's a magical text and magical texts are really interesting um, especially because we have I don't think we have any real magical text that contains Old Nubian. Um, they're usually in Coptic. So already the fact that this is a bilingual Coptic Old Nubian magical text makes it quite a unique piece. Um, so what do I mean with magical? Um, it's probably a misnomer in the sense that um, these texts in the end derive from practices that were um, part of ancient Egyptian religion um, as practiced among the, let's say, population in, in, uh, in Egypt and Nubia. And so they, um, they these texts usually give um, the owner of the text a certain power, right? So there's this idea that the text conveys uh, power onto the owner, you know, either for good things to happen or bad things to happen to other people or to ward off spells from, again, other people that may affect you. Um, so it's also very much a, uh, a practice that is based on written texts, or at least, you know, the only thing that we've got left are written texts. So they're kind of like this amulet type of things. Um, and if you want to know more, about um, Coptic magical papyri, there's actually this great project. Um, and I'll, I'll put up the link. Oh, let me just click this away. I'll put up the link as well under the video, which is the Coptic magical papyri, papyri project. Um, they have some really nice materials. So they have this, um, oh, this is the same. They have this database, which you go here to database. Um, uh, the Kiprianos database of ancient ritual texts and this gives an index of everything that has been um, found anywhere 
and published and they've been able to index and uh, some of these actually also hold the images so like it really depends on who excavated and where the original is and so on but for example m7 which is um, apparently held in chicago it's in egyptian uh, sahidic dialect so it's from upper egypt uh, it's been published and here we can actually get an image so if we if we load this then we can see and this is unfortunately it's a bit turned but can i i cannot um let me just download this then I'll just uh, save it on the desktop so then i can turn it so here this is like what such a papyrus looks like, right? So we have this rather, as you can see, continuous text, and there are a lot of repetitions, right? You, so you see this part is, is repeated. I mean, my Coptic is really crappy, so I cannot translate this for you on the fly, but you can see that these things are repeated. And then usually what you have um, are these long, maybe this one doesn't have it, maybe on the other side, um, are these long strings of vowels, which are very, um, particular to it now but what we can see here uh, let's also save this we don't see it here but we'll see it in our in the little text um, that I'll show you in a bit um, so usually you have these very long lines of vowels like I O um, um, that are a frequent aspect of it and another frequent aspect of these magical texts are these so-called ring letters where you have these you know strokes like crosses you see the cross types of figures sometimes letter figures where the ends have these little rings on it um, and these are a very common occurrence in magical texts as well um, so like this is this is what the magical text looks like in in coptic um and what is really nice about this project is that they have a podcast um with some really good people giving introductions about coptic magic so if you're interested you definitely should check out the podcast uh, jacques van der vliet is one of the specialists one of these specialists on coptic magical texts and he was also my teacher and uh, the one who introduced me to Old Nubian, so you sh definitely should check out this uh, introduction to Coptic magic with Jacques. Um, and again, I'll post the link in the YouTube video here below um, once I'm done with this video. It will be a short one, so let's let's have a look. Okay, so here we have the little the corner, right? So you can see that this is something that was folded um, maybe in four. That's what it looks like. And then we only got one quarter left of it. Um, and so what I've done here is I already pasted the um, the uh, transcription of um, of Yoast, and we have here one side. This is probably the front side, and we have here another side. This is the back side, right? And so, oh, this is going very fast. Um, and so you can immediately see that we here have this very characteristic ring letters right here and here and here and also here. Um, and here we have like these crosses and this C. Um, here we seem to have some repetitions, right? So this is what I talked about. So this A. And here you can see ah, uh, here you can see low up. Um, and um, yeah, we just have to figure out now a few lines of Old Nubian and a few lines of Coptic. So what is already nice is that um, uh, Joos obviously already had to look at the Coptic, which is great because my Coptic, as I said, is not very good. Um, so we have here line two. Let's actually this should have like some line numbers oh, it stays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one two three four one two three four one two three four oh, cool. 
So we see here in line two, there is a reference to a child that weeps. Um, we have a reference to blood, blood all over him. And then we have here male birth under the feet, right? So blood birth, um, And weeping, these are so. This this probably deals either with a spell concerning pregnancy, or maybe miscarriage, or um, fertility. You know, some were kind of in that area. Um, and so here we have um, in line one we have the word for toti, and then we have a verb form. Yeah, I mean you really shouldn't. These should be marked as like as these magical letters because otherwise we get really confused. So, so that we know exactly because we, I mean, the thing is that you don't really know whether you should read these as a, as letters or as words or as just signs. Um, and then what we also should do is to um, offset this. Oh, how I hate these types of things. Um, okay. So we at least have the offsetting right right because we see here this cross and then this alpha maybe it's a numeral um, underneath it yeah this one child exactly here yeah. and we just want to have this nicely represented in our transcription okay so what do we have um, Joost already indicated this and this is correct. This is a child cries, I would say. This is, um, so I have the word totty. This is obviously, um, dot child. Somewhere in the dictionary. Um, and this is the subject of that verb that comes after that. And we can already see that this is um, uh, not the absence. We can already see this is a late text or at least a non-standard text in the sense that um, we have these forms with this final M. Now that's not um, that's not very canonical. Um, so this is win to weep with present tense. Affirmative. 
Um, compiler All right, so in in standard Nubian, old Nubian, you wouldn't find this this M here, um, and you would find E now. So with a single new could be a spelling thing, it could be something that's happening in this, this particular paradigm. Um, but in um, modern Obin, you have several present tense forms, at least the second plural form, if I'm not mistaken, that end in M. And this M has been taken from affirmative verb forms um, that usually have this type of M. Uh, you also have some, some like a Yusuf in, in me. And so this M, um, was taken on board in certain parts of the, the paradigm in order to disambiguate with particular forms. Um, so the absence of the determiner here, you would expect totil, the child, um, or uh, toti, uh, yeah, toti well or something, a child. Um, but here we simply have toti, so it's probably the child or a child cries and then we have a um, a bunch of these ring letters so i would say here that it's like the child cries and this is uh, you know nubian or weeps let's flow weep um, and so we seem to have like this like it's bilingual and it's translated right so this this seems to correspond to what's here below. Okay, then let's go to the, then we have a bunch of Coptic here. And what is important here is the word blood here, the word snuff, his blood, pef snuff, pef snuff agentif, his blood or agentif, uh, his blood over him. Not very clear what, how to translate this is at position, a bunch of magical letters, and then um, what's happening here? Um, this certainly is two words. This is Old Nubian. Um, and this is the word blood. So I think that um, Joost had suggested that this means kindat. Um, what did he say? Thorn. Um, that that seems unlikely. Ah, okay, he underscored the ring letters. Okay, I find underscore a little bit confusing. I'll just keep them capitalized here. He can do whatever he wants. Um, this is not thorn. This is another thing. So it's the blood of, clearly, actually. So, um, And there should be a letter before that. Right, you can see kin. <coughs> I would say e skin, e kin. This this nearly looks like an epsilon form here. Right, let me just um, so right. We have in here kappa. Okay, yeah, kappa. I see something like this. We'll have to check the dictionary if there's anything that can make sense there. What is? And he seems to have, or the scribe seems to have dipped their pen 
in some new ink here, right? Because you see this fading out and um, these now. Um, in any case, this is these. Blood um, with genitive nam. So of blood. Maybe of the blood of. Could this this can be. Feeling that there is a retrograde. And there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, there's this esque. rather short maybe it's just eek here Ek, eek, but these were verbs I think eek so just a quick look um, Yeah, of course, it's just second singular pronoun. But that's not what I'm looking for. Ik um, to be near, to comfort, <coughs> to lead. Fire, maybe. Eek is fire, of course. The blood of fire. I'm going with that. It sounds pretty magical to me. Um, in any case, there's just no other way that we can. Um, this is definitely dotted. Of the blood for fire. I'm just going. Stroke is actually above the cop arm. Yeah. I would say this is very uncertain. Uh, uncertain. Okay, now then we have a bunch of Coptic again. And this definitely looks like Old Nubian. So we have Koda, which is, I agree, this Koda Atu.
Otukoa. This is this is from by not to call a law. Oh, oh, what the hell? So this is cooler or to call a law by a. No, this is not a me. Let's say there's a yota after this. And then maybe another letter. <clears throat> so, what do we have? Four, five, six, seven. Seven. We have Kora. This is. Uh, oh, this should definitely not be. This is clear. This is a clear Omicron. These tiles are this Upsilon Omicron, okay, a little bit vague. This Lobda is clear as day. Uh, we have Kora, which is um, Feast or Sacraments. Kora, Feast or Sacraments. even offering it's funny because Kore is used um, in your Christian liturgy for the sacrament um, so when the blood and the uh, body of Jesus is distributed in church um, it's funny to see it here in a rather more um, or let's say in a non-Christian context to see the same word being used I think that in itself is really quite um, quite nice because that word still lives on in no being as the word that is used for um, eight, fitoral eight, or at least that's how you would, um, yeah, for the eight, I think. Um, and so you have this word that is consistently used you know, in magical context, in Christian liturgical context, in Islamic uh, religious context. So, you know, it's it's fun that that word kind of persists. So this is feast or sacrament. Um, and I think that this is really the... Uh, note that this is the first. I don't know. Maybe actually, this could also be used in a Christian context. By the way, this could actually refer to the sacrament. Because why not? I mean, there are magical texts inside churches. There are magical texts found inside tombs of bishops. Yeah. So actually, maybe this is they actually mean the sacrament, which is you know. Jesus doing his magical things with your childbirth or, you know, cursing your enemy not to give birth or. Um, then we have this word Atu, which I remember. What is this? Water or something? This is um, it's so familiar. I've seen it before. Atu. It's not in a dictionary, but I've seen it before. Koreatu, Koreatu Koalo. We have et, etto for water. We have wasn't there this Coptic Old Nubian? Ostracon. Which had Ectu? No. 
<clears throat> there was this word for bread. There is this one Coptic Old Nubian Ostrakon that gives this really fun little word list, but how do I find again where that was? Um, I probably wrote about this somewhere in the grammar. Here we go. Ah, it was Asku. No. Another idea could be that. Koreat is a derivative then of Kore. Koreatu. Mm. That also makes little sense. Because it is already. Okay, I don't know. I don't know for the moment. Um... Then we have koalo, it's just simply the verb to have. Ko to have. This verb, this is definitely The problem is also that we don't know what, what comes before this. Uh, because the previous line here is Coptic. Sacraments have right. Okay, let's have a look at the other side. So we have male birth under the feet. Okay.
let's follow his. I, you know, I don't. I don't even know whether these letters should be read as as actual letters. Um, Misa. Okay, but this is all Coptic, so I don't care. Then Tona. Okay, no idea. Some letters indeed. Unu. Yeah. So this again is um, it seems as if there is a translation going on because with first so and three a two. child um, yeah man person and then we have a verbal form at least we have this this whole thing here what the hell in any case this is un to bear where that is. This is possibly Uno Cosin Uno Figured it out. Un nu. All sin. These are clear. I would say it's a copper. And the only way that I can think that that works is if that is a innovative perfect with ko. which has been attested, if I'm not mistaken, in this Akasha West text that I did a while ago. Um, yeah. This Matara Noskona. this open for a moment. Um, uh, this is a kappa. A man that has been born. Thank you. 
it's really interesting because you see in these later texts you see these um you see this these perfect like the, the whole past tense paradigm kind of collapsing so in Nubi you have these you have two past tenses so one with a sigma the sigmatic past and one um with a back vowel and in Nobin, these two have been combined and you have a second uh, innovative past tense with ko. Um, in several of these like documentary texts and like less canonical writing, you see like them rearranging the past tense paradigm. And so this is again, one of these forms is like, just like this Matarang Oskona, like he became a martyr where you have both ko uh, and and a perfective suffix this os um, like they're kind of they're kind of rearranging um, yeah reinventing their their paradigm um, and pass to sigma. some more examples of these um, uh, aspect tense tense perfect ah. there we have one that is a perfect match with ours Yeah, so we have this do to seek, this perfect this call which is here uko and then s we have s here this is a pretty good even just compare this this is a parallel form okay let's check if that's actually the right line number because i don't want to be The wrong uh, yeah line two here we have it do conessen okay so this is good this is good so the verse that we have done because the rest of it is 
rather, um, you know, these long vowels. Lo -a. It's kind of fun. Lo -a -b -b. Aye, aye, aye. This is not a moon. This is just a bunch of love does. Epsilons, okay. And oh, there's even this nice line here. You see? Atu, atu, atu. Come on, we should find what this is. Uh, just gonna check uh, some standard dictionaries uh, if there's any anything that is up to. Um, let's go for uh, our booster. Not. There was a word to beat. No, this is not very helpful. I am uh, yeah, the only way is to think it of as this Koreatu, which which must be like fee sacraments with It was pretty good. We found some funky verb forms. And a nice parallel between the old Nubian and the um, and the Coptic. So 
the weeping, the weeping, the blood, the blood. Male birth, a man. Great. So I can send this back to Yoast and then who knows when it will be published. Mm, yep. All right. That was it. Maybe a short video this time. But um, yeah, sometimes I get these small texts and um, I send them back to whoever is working on them. And hopefully they think my comments are helpful. And then, um, then we'll see them maybe in print at some point. In any case, you've already seen it. So um, I am still very busy uh, finishing up the final issue of Dotawo on comparative uh, Northern East Sudanic linguistics. It's going to look really cool. It's going to be online. It's going to include a library. So it's going to be a completely new type of format. So which I will announce, uh, you know, a bit, a bit down the road. And um, yeah, that is, that is, I guess, my main old Nubian work. And I, and I finished the second round of proofs of the grammar. So hopefully um, a Peters will publish that soon as well. But they have not gotten back to me about some type of time frame. In any case, I'll certainly let you know when that happens. Okay, well, thanks for watching and um, see you next time.